afternoon, everyone. First, a big thank you to Richard, Matt, Shreya, and the Muse team for inviting me to Amsterdam. So I've been supporting Muse for quite a while. Who's heard of what three words? OK, that's pretty cool. I'm going to humbly suggest that if you haven't, then you will probably always remember when you first heard about what three words, which is a pretty huge statement. So when you're traveling, you need three things. You need a map, you need a navigation system, and you need an address. And over the last two decades or so, mapping and indeed satellite imagery has greatly improved. The problem is that addressing hasn't really changed for hundreds of years. And when you come to think about it, addressing is actually pretty poor. So the world doesn't have great addressing. It's either poor, inadequate, and in many places around the world, there is no addressing whatsoever. In fact, according to the United Nations, 75% of the people on this planet have no address. So the systems and addressing is simply not good enough. This is a map. It's a Google map. Have a look at the coordinates. And as you can see, there's absolutely nothing here except for a couple of roads. Well, you'd be wrong, because there are at least 30,000 homes in Rocinha, which is one of the largest favelas in Brazil. These are people that have no rights. They can't open a bank account. They have no social services. They can't get anything delivered to them. And yet, according to a map, they don't exist. On the other extreme, this is a few years old photograph of Dubai, part of the world I've lived in for 16 years. Tallest building on the planet, Burj Khalifa. But many of these areas in the Middle East have roads called unnamed roads. Now, you might think it's only the Middle East that has unnamed roads. Well, where I come from in London, there are roads which have no name. It's very confusing. And if you're in London, there are, depending on what you call London, there are 19 roads which are called Church Road. So if I was living in one of these roads, you'd have to give the taxi driver or the Uber more information in order to get to exactly where I was. And if you're in Mexico City, it's even more confusing. There are 632 Juarez streets. So good luck trying to find that supper venue with your new Mexican friend. And this is a genuine sign that still exists in London. I can promise you that that isn't just in London. That's throughout old world Europe. There are many streets which change names. Certain people in certain parts of the world don't have their name on that street any longer, and roads change. In fact, addressing around the world is chaotic. Ever been here? <coughs> Even if you can speak that language, does it actually help you? Anybody been to Japan? Yes? Easy to get around in Japan? <coughs> Not really. A lot of Japanese addressing is based on chronology. So if this was a one kilometer street here, and I'm house number one, the first house built, I'm number one. At the end of the, end of the street, 800, meter, 800 meters away, is house number two. So I could be number one next to number 15 on one side and number 164 on the next. So the postman knows how to get there. And some of the very best places in the world simply don't have an address. So this is a street market in Marrakesh. I would struggle to tell you where this street market was, let alone this particular stall, which is the best place to get a lunch or evening meal on a particular day 
in Marrakesh. And if this was the best cafe to go to for lunch today, it wasn't here yesterday and it won't be here tomorrow. How could I explain to you how to reach me if you were coming from a different office? This is a genuine Airbnb. Good luck trying to find this at night without the moon on the edge of a mountainside. It has no address. And addressing can be somewhat confusing. So if you look at Largo Vegur and Largo Vegur, there's only one letter R missing from the second Largo Vegur. But this famous American tourist was traveling, and if, for those of you who can see down here, he was four hours, 45 minutes away from where he needed to be for that important meeting. And by the time he got back, he was nine and a half hours away from where he should have been. Not exactly that, that helpful. So what about dropping a pin if you were Google Maps? So this is the New York Hilton Midtown. It drops a, mat, a pin in the middle of the building. So unless you're a cat burglar or you land by parachute, how are you going to get into this building? Is it 54th Street, 53rd Street, or the, one of the two roads at either end? And if you were driving there, can you imagine you were trying to find the car park in a one-way system in New York in rush hour? You miss the car park entrance. You go to the front door of the Hilton because they've got valet service. No, they don't. And you're told, sir, just go right, 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 and it's just behind you. That could take 20 minutes in New York. So coming to the tobacco theater, for those of you who were not from Amsterdam, did anyone find it a little bit difficult to get here? It's a pretty small street, but was it that easy? And was the number easy to get there, or did you actually count all the numbers as you went? So GPS coordinates are fantastically accurate and virtually impossible for humans to communicate to humans, or indeed for humans to communicate to a machine. Imagine getting into an autonomous vehicle and giving that address. If you were to get two of those numbers transposed, in other words, twisted in the middle, you may well be in the north part of Rome rather than the south part of Rome. So we believe it's time to launch a new universal and precise addressing system. What we've done is divided the world's surface into 57 trillion three meter by three meter squares. And we've given every square on planet Earth a three word address, which means that where you're sitting is completely different address to where you're sitting. And every three meters on the entire planet has a different address. So if you were in Bruges, in Belgium, this is your three-word address for that red door. It's the only place that those three words can be. This is a hotel in the Ukraine, in Kiev. These three words are all from the dictionary. They're not made up, they're not branded words. They're three words that everybody can understand. And what we've done in English, just before you ask, we've done in 37 other languages, with many more to come. We're already in five Indian languages, four more languages in India by the first quarter of next year. We're in Chinese, we're in Russian, Arabic, Mongolian, Swahili, until I sort of looked at Swahili, had no idea that 129 million people speak Swahili. We're in Arabic, and none of these languages are a translation of another. Anybody here speak French? Yes, so what is snowman in French? Bonhomme de neige? Bonhomme de neige. So that's three words. So you can't assume that one word in one language is one word in another. So that means that every language is, has to be built bottom up. But if I was to send a three-word address from my phone 
to a friend of mine who runs a hotel in Moscow, Valery Maximov, I will send three word address in English of where to meet me in London. He will open those three words in Russian because his phone is set to Russian. We will both meet in exactly the same three meter by three meter square, but the three words in Russian have no relationship to the three words in English. So if these were your three words, these are the, this is the only square on the planet with these three words in that order. So, if I was to have sent you a three-word address for the tobacco theatre, this is it. And that takes me, as it did this morning when I was getting here from the Jakarta Hotel, to exactly those two brown doors outside. There they are. And this is um, in London. So our apps are completely free. This is not an app play. So our apps are free for anyone to download. And even though we're 57 trillion three meter by three meter squares, the entire file size of our system is only about 14 megabytes. Now, if you're not techie, which I'm not, that means it's about one third of a 30 second video clip. So how is that possible? Because we're not a database. We're an algorithm. We're an algorithm that takes a GPS coordinate, puts it into three words, sends it as a GPS coordinate, and opened as three words. So that means you don't need a data connection to use our system. So if you're lost and you've broken your ankle, in the middle of Nepal, when you're climbing the Himalayas or the Himalayas, then you can actually give someone a three-word address of exactly where you are. And we've even thought about three-word addresses which are similar sounding. So when you have 16 to 18 numbers in a GPS coordinate, because they're numbers, there's no logic to them. So if you were to switch two of those numbers around, you wouldn't know you'd done it until you were in the wrong place. If, for example, I said, come and meet me in the UK for coffee at Toffee Branch Pyramid, but you heard coffee, Coffee Branch Pyramid is in West Bengal in India. So even I wouldn't invite you for coffee in India if I was inviting you to the UK. So how are we being used in travel and tourism? And just to let you know, for any of you in travel and tourism, all of you somehow, there is zero cost to using our system for the travel and tourism. It's completely free of charge. So a gentleman, Stefan, at the back there, who's just come up to me and said, I absolutely love your system, what you've done for the hotel industry. He's got three hotels in Germany, in Cologne, and he's already using us on the website. There is no cost to using our system. So this is Soldiers Field in Chicago. If I had a ticket for you, where would I meet you? There would be a whole conversation, correct? Which gate should I be at? Well, everything, every single three meter by three meter square on this photograph has an address. So if I'm standing outside here and I have my ticket, I can actually just say to you, I'll meet you at those three words there, shine, payer, local, and you will be in the same square as me to take that ticket from me. Not meeting in a pub, not doing this, not doing that. Small luxury hotels, all 520 or so hotels now have three word addresses, not only in their printed directory, but online as well. My old company, I was managing director of this company for five years in Europe, Middle East and Africa, all 1,300 hotels from the preferred hotel group have a three-word address. I'm a simple hotelier, by the way. I'm not a techie. I've been in the hotel industry nearly all my life. This is Glastonbury. Many of you will know Glastonbury, one of the largest music festivals in the world. This is 200,000 people in a field. And this year, and the two years 
prior to last year, because it didn't happen last year, they were using us. Who was using us? It was the paramedics, because they set up all of their stations around this site with a three-word address. And if one of you had collapsed and you were in urgent need, you would be seen by a first responder. And then that first responder would radio for an ambulance with a three-word address to come and help save your life if it was critical. My son went to this concert this year. He used a three-word address for the tent that he put in one of those fields somewhere. We also have a photo app. Again, it's free to download. So if you're in the hotel business, how many of you are in the hotel business directly? OK, quite a few. You could get all your guests to download this app, ask them to go and take photographs of the most amazing thing they've seen every day, bring that unique content back to you for you to use on your website with permission. And at the bottom, as you take the photograph, you will have a three-word address of exactly where they were standing when they took that photo. So the next time a guest comes to your hotel and says, where's that most amazing place in Amsterdam to take a sunset, your concierge or your host will know exactly where that guest needs to go. These are some of the applications. So Lonely Planet is a partner. And now every point of interest in Mongolia and now in Saudi Arabia, and some of you may know that Saudi Arabia has done a huge push on tourism this week, in the last 10 days. So all of their points of interest in Saudi Arabia, which to me is amazing when you know how secretive they've been, has a three-word address. This is about sustainability. We've talked about sustainability a little bit already today. This is a Mongolia reindeer tribe. They're on the Mongolian steppes, and many of these tribes are being forced off their land because they can't find enough money to keep doing what they've done for centuries. And somebody suggested to them that they join Airbnb. But how can they join Airbnb? They're nomadic. So together with Airbnb, we've now helped this reindeer, reindeer tribe. Every time they move, every week or two weeks, they put their tent down, they send a three-word address to their cousin in Ulaanbaatar, who then uploads the new address on Airbnb. And anybody in this room, if you have sort of kids and you want to show them something amazing, you can go and stay with this tribe wherever they are on the Mongolian steppes. And now they don't need to go into the city. These are just some of the hotels that are using us already and some more. And Stefan, you'll be up there soon if you just let me know what you'd like us to do and give us permission. Every boat on the planet has a three-word address. Every single boat. No longer do you have that, do you know the Maryland Marina? It's not necessary. Just give a three-word address and you'll go to the mooring place of that boat. And if there's been a storm and that boat has changed, then you just give a three-word address to the new mooring place. For some of you might know this as the Excel Center where World Travel Market is held. So if you were building a stand and you were delivering, if you were a, a visitor, a delegate, do you get off at the Custom House Station or the Prince Regent Station? Everything has a three-word address. This is NAVMI, the largest offline navigation system in the world. They've embedded us in their system, and now you can actually put a three-word address into NAVMI. This guy here is Sajid Khan. He's the Senior Vice President of Mobility and Innovation at Mercedes. Two years ago, in January, he put up this slide, Google Home, Amazon Alexa, wearables, which is generic, and what three words, and announced that what three words were their choice and speech recognition partner in their cars. And now you can get into many Mercedes, and you simply press a button and you go, hello Mercedes, navigate to what three words, and you will go from A to anywhere in the world where you wish to get to. 
And Mercedes have said that by the end of next year, every one of their vehicles will actually have us embedded. So this is how it works. Before you start your journey, get the three-word address of your destination. Press the voice button and say, Navigate to what three words? Vibe, defaults, classic. Confirm the correct three-word address to see your route. The line number, please. One. Number one. Would you like to start route guidance? Yes. Starting route guidance. Follow the directions to your precise destination. Imagine that is in the fog and your son or daughter has now broken their ankle and they're not in a car park. How would you find them? So Ford have signed with us as well. It's not quite the same. We haven't been embedded yet in their sat-nav, but it's through their app. And about 10 days ago, Tata, does everybody know Tata in India? So they've signed with us. So the, all of their cars, and Daewoo, and Range Rover, and Jaguar, and Land Rover, are now going to have our system in their, in their vehicles from next year. So millions of Indian drivers will now be able to use our system in Tata vehicles. So Cabify, anybody know Cabify? They're actually huge in South America and Spain and Portugal, very similar to Uber. And they've embedded us, so you can actually search with a three-word address. And we've just passed an Amazon skills test where you can now put a three-word address into Alexa and order an Uber vehicle to come and collect you from a three-word address. So we also do a lot with emergency services. I'll let you read this. So it took us about four and a half years. We've been going since 2013. It took us about four and a half years to get the first emergency service in the UK to adopt us into their own system. In the following six months, a further 64 emergency services have now embedded us. So these are fire, ambulance, and police. And you might say, so what's the relevance of exactly that for the hospitality industry? Well, you have travelers, many of which are adventurous. They don't always know where they're going, especially in unusual places. So we've just partnered with these two organizations as well. Uh, Maiden Voyage, which really looks after um, corporations around the world, giving them advice on how to keep their travelers who travel on business safe. But the top one, WonderSafe, is very interesting. This is an Australian company with an American CEO. She's come up with a little gadget. Now, this gadget can do a number of things. The first one, it is a 1,000 lumen light. That light can also be a strobe light. So if someone is trying to attack you, you can actually disorientate them. The third thing it does is it has a 140 decibel alarm. And the last one, which they've just embedded, is a three-word address. So when they press that button, when you press that button, in a place that you haven't been to before, three words where exactly you're standing will be sent to three of your friends somewhere close by. Now, clearly, if you're in a, an area that you don't know, you don't live in, you might not have them. But if you can just send those three-word address to anybody, they can actually find you. We're in Chinese in China. <coughs> We're in South Korea. This is a cacao map. So it's very difficult to get around South Korea, but they are now promoting us the, the number one addressing system for cacao map. And as you probably know, Google Maps can't get into China. We're already in China and opening an office in Shanghai as, as I speak. We even have some wacky little one-offs. This is a brewery in... Milwaukee, they love us so much, 
the brewery decided that they were going to create a beer with three words, and that is where this beer is brewed, at fear.movie.lions. Just recently, and obviously the list goes up and down, because if it doesn't, then you can never get to number one. We've just gone to the top of the Google App Play store. We've gone to the number one place of all free apps in the UK, above WhatsApp, with the one number one navigation app, above Google Maps and above Waze, with the number one travel and local app, above booking.com and above Ryanair. There we are. Oops, we're missing that one out. Okay, so can I just ask Ruben just to play that, please? Have you ever struggled to find a friend? Had a taxi take you to the wrong entrance? A package delivered to the wrong address? Or couldn't explain where you were? We developed what three words because addressing around the world should be better. And talking about a location can be really hard. Street addresses are often not precise enough and don't exist in parks, rural areas or rapidly developing places. People struggle to find each other and businesses fail to reach customers. 75% of countries lack a reliable address system or suffer from no addressing at all. It's frustrating cost the economy billions and affects lives. What three words is the solution? A global address system made up of 57 trillion three meter squares, each identified by a unique three word address. It's as simple as saying table, lamp, spoon to find that specific location on earth. Three word addresses are precise, yet easy to remember. They can be written down, spoken, or shared by email or SMS. Easier words are in more populated areas, and addresses that sound the same are spaced far apart to avoid confusion. The whole service even works offline, without the need for a data connection. And what we've done in English, we've replicated in many other languages, with plenty more to come. You can discover and share a three-word address using our free app or online map. And partners in over 170 countries have integrated our code into their apps, tools, and services. Logistics companies use them to improve deliveries, saving valuable time and money. Emergency services and aid agencies now locate people in need and coordinate support teams using three-word addresses. They're being used in mapping and navigation tools and by travellers and adventurers to locate hidden gems. Three-word addresses are being added to photos, contact details and social feeds. And the code is being built into the mobility and drone systems of tomorrow. Now everywhere has a three-word address. The most astonishing places, the most exciting places, and the places that need it most. We're helping to make the world a less frustrating, more efficient, and safer place. Three words at a time. Thank you.